this is showing you how from a state way back in the days where you can control your code uh, you could install anything you wanted and run anything you wanted on the device and device of choice you could also choose the devices and modify them internally uh, and of course keep your data put it in disks or whatever you used to put data on magnetic tapes or whatever uh, but now you're in a position where all the power is at the top so the whole notion of computers being enablers and something that's handed down to people here have some computers organize manage you know uh, try to change parties whatever it's being pulled back uh, so all the computers are basically owned and inherited or rented from above like you know here's a PlayStation 3 by the way don't install Linux on it because we will kill this thing if you do and by the way don't use you know only the only things you can use is these DVDs that we have basically used codes on to disable if you try to make copies of them so they don't really let you run anything on it that's not approved they don't let you do things with it they don't let you modify the playstation even though it's really just a computer so you could in theory add some memory to it if it was more open uh, and, and all it is is just a rental uh, business again instead of giving people computers and and lots of people don't pay attention to that and just say, oh, that's, you know, that's fine, you know, they, oh, let's just, you know, let's put our data on the cloud because nothing's happened before. And each time, you know, it happens, they will kind of use their sting a bit. And people say, oh, hold on a second, why do they delete our books, you know? I just put this book and it's my Kindle, you know, they shouldn't delete this book. But they did, you know, they did. So, well... We've got a few other topics. I'd like to just branch off very quickly because we we did mention the PS3, so it's only fair we bring up Sony. Um, apparently, Sony's had another been a the victim of another hacking attempt, or a hacking group has claimed to have stolen one million passwords and email addresses from the Sony network. Um, this is from I'm just reading the article here from the BBC. Uh, actually, uh, reports about the other one is about Sony actually knowing about the. Uh, actually having warning signs before this happened and not doing anything about it. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, as if things couldn't get any worse for Sony in terms of uh, PR and their recent uh, hacking attempts, which is, some people are here are dubbing it the uh, the biggest hacking uh, hacking uh, incident in uh, in history. So, uh, the largest, it's very bad English. And uh, this one, it's um, the broken in service allegedly from sonypictures.com. So, that's... Uh, a million people. Now, what I can say is my, I don't know if I mentioned this on a previous show, but my, my card details were on the uh, PlayStation Network, and I wasn't clever enough to use a credit card, which gives you some protection for online purchases and fraudulent purchases. And Muggins here typed in his debit card details, which comes out of my main account. Having said that, I haven't received any issue from it at all. There's been, no, I've been keeping a close eye over the last few weeks, and there's been no issues as of yet, so hopefully I'm out of the, out of the danger zone. So, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure about how much of this is devilment or whether it's actually an orchestrated attack with the sole intention of some fraudulent activity with these card details. Nobody seems it's to come... It's costing everyone a lot of money, by yeah. the way. It's not just Sony. Uh, I, I read a tweet, well, actually, I read a retweet of a person who uh, phoned the bank. And before he could say anything to the bank, the bank said, is this about the Sony incident? Because they, they get so many yeah. calls now, people having to order new cards and use men hours and Sony doesn't pay for it. I don't think they even ask for a compensation, uh, these people. But, but the banks, you know, you will pay the banks for the time and the trouble and everything else because of these incidents. Uh, and, you know, you usually talk about how that's caused also by Windows zombies and, and how the companies are not liable when this type of stuff happens. And in this case, Sony knew it had out of date software. It wasn't responsible enough. It also got warnings from the people who did that. Apparently, allegedly, there's some articles they they should have known better, and they didn't do enough about it because they preferred to keep the uh, good name. Uh, what they thought at the time would be the smart thing is to not say to people anything and sending uh, some warning signs or saying, "Oh, we are not secure." They just tried to keep information locked down. And even when it happened, and you can probably remember, people were waiting for days and days for Sony to say something about what just what just happened. So. Sony even took days to try and do a PR exercise and how to, oh, by the way, millions of people, you know, the credit cards are out. You know, if, if it happens, just say it as soon as possible so they can cancel the cards, but they didn't do that. 
Yeah, it's um, it's it's all been a bit a bit of a big mess, and it was a shame because Sony was actually gathering some momentum with its PlayStation Three product. Uh, how that'll affect the next generation of sales figures uh, next quarter. It's now PlayStation Four now, so apparently it's not too bad. Uh, so well, well, it'll remain to be seen. Uh, how that affects next quarter's figures for sales because I think I mentioned before on the show that Sony had had quite a good run for the last couple of years in terms of units sold globally compared to that of its competitors. So we'll see how that affects it. And running down the news, have you got any tidbits that you would like to bring up? Uh, Nokia. And what have you heard about it? Did you hear about the results? I first started tuning into this Nokia news when the tweet was made by that uh, Russian blogger. And there was a rumor about Microsoft buying Nokia and, uh, I, I mobile unit. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it was, I was very much on the periphery. I've been uh, rather busy at work. And then I've just received an email from one of the uh, sites I'm subscribed to saying that, uh, with further information on it. So I'm hoping, Roy, that you can fill us in with the, the current state of affairs in regards to that rumor. And, well, uh, the stock is in a free fall. Uh, I think something like 12, 15% or something. That's the second time this happens. Uh, I don't know if Elox actually got some stocks in it because previously he was getting a lot of uh, a lot of trouble because he had he was one of the biggest shareholders of Microsoft uh, and he didn't have any any stake basically in Nokia. Today I saw an article uh, sent to me from someone in Argentina uh, about Balmer sending limos and stuff to try and pamper the Nokia staff and using his mall. Uh, Stephen Elop to uh, use the company basically in the same way he used uh, Yahoo or Novell. And, uh, my theory, and it's not just a theory, it's actually confirmed by some interviews with the company, it's pretty sad, but uh, Nokia has got lots of patents, uh, not just in software, not just software patents, so it doesn't matter if software patents are legal or not legal. They have lots of patents in phone hardware, so folding keyboards, uh, all kinds of shapes of screens or uh, how you actually construct the hardware internally. They have loads of hardware patents, and I think Microsoft wants those patents uh, for a very simple reason. You can probably know that. It's not to build their own phones, uh, which they probably will continue to build just so that they don't get called a patent troll, but they want all of these patents to be one of those you know, biggest companies with the biggest so-called intellectual property of well, on phones, and and they want to then go around to LG and HTC and maybe even to Google and to make money out of Linux phones. <clears throat> so they don't have to win an operating system. All they have to do is what they've always done and basically be a taxing company just instead of taking Windows tax out of every computer sold, whether the computer actually uses the Windows or not, some people do, but uh, basically making a tax out of every computer sold and also making a tax out of every phone sold. It doesn't have to run Windows. It just has to be a, a phone, you know. And they'll go around with those patents, and they'll go after Android makers and require, as they do from HTC, you know, pay us five bucks or we sue you, which is extortion. So I don't really know what the RICO Act is in coming into effect here. I suppose nobody has tried it so far, except for Barnes and Noble. They actually do something about it and will go into court. And no Motorola has got lots of patents, so they too will. Uh, actually going into court with Microsoft now and arguing of this issue. Uh, I don't think I don't think we have enough coverage of this. It's really disappointing to be honest. Uh, so so th- this this is the new Microsoft. You know they always say, oh the new Microsoft. No, this is the new Microsoft. It's a patent troll. Uh, it's an abuser. It's trying to take over companies. It is only it has just gotten about a thousand patents from Novell. So Novell's destruction is really good news for Microsoft. They get all the patents. They get uh, Novell in the hands of uh, I think Attachment is a gold certified Microsoft partner, so you know, not run the well, so it's, uh, well, a lot. We'll stick on the subject of Microsoft for a few minutes, if I may, because um, we're going to just very briefly touch on a bit of Microsoft news, which uh, doesn't uh, cover any sort of uh, patent uh, issue, and it's uh, to do with uh, Windows 8. And uh, I'm just going to... It's Windows Vista Plus <laughs> Plus. And I'm going to be quoting from Microsoft Watch here, because I do still keep an eye on the Microsoft website. Uh, for those that haven't heard me say this before or haven't read any of my writings, uh, Microsoft Watch was one of the sites that actually got me 
uh, into Linux completely in the home. I met a lot of Linux users on the Microsoft website, uh, Microsoft Watch site, when it was run by a chap called Joe Wilcox when he was writing articles for it. Um, Joe Wilcox is, I think, a fantastic writer who is very good at drawing people to his articles and creating a debate, whether you agree with his writing or not. And with me, I was about 60-40 of the time. I didn't, uh, I didn't agree with what he said, but he was a very good writer. 